Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss how to evaluate type 2 improper integrals. These are integrals over a finite interval where the integrand is discontinuous on the closed interval AB. And these three integrals here are examples of this type of improper integrals. But before we evaluate these three integrals here, let's recall the three cases of these type 2 improper integrals. The first case is if the integrand is continuous on the half open interval AB and it is discontinuous from the right at A, then to evaluate this integral, we find the limit of this integral here as T approaches A from the right. So, for example, if we have an integrand here that has an infinite discontinuity at A, let's say we have the following graph. So, what we're going to do is first find this integral here from T to B, and we find the limit of that integral as T approaches A from the right. And if this limit exists, then we say that this improper integral is convergent. Otherwise, we say that it is divergent. Similarly, if the integrand is continuous in this half open interval AB and discontinuous from the left at B, then we compute this integral here by taking the limit of this integral from A to T as T approaches B from the left. So let's say we have a function that has an infinite discontinuity at B. Then to find this integral here, we find the integral from A to T of f of x dx, which in this case represents this area here. And we let the T approaches B from the left. And if this limit exists, we say that this improper integral is convergent. And otherwise, it is divergent. And for the last case, if the integrand has a discontinuity at a point C, which is between these limits of integration, A and B, then to evaluate this integral, we split it into two integrals. And we may use this 1 and 2 here to evaluate these two integrals. And if both of these integrals here are finite, then we conclude that this improper integral is convergent. But if one of these is not finite, then we conclude that this improper integral is divergent. Let us now evaluate improper integrals. First, let's look at this uh, integral here. Notice that our denominator, this uh, sine theta here, is equal to 0 when theta is equal to pi. Therefore, our integrand is discontinuous at pi. And actually, it has an infinite discontinuity at x equals pi. Because as we approach uh, pi from the left, uh, this uh, sine uh, theta here will approach uh, 0 from the right. And uh, cosine theta will approach uh, negative 1. So our integrand will approach negative infinity as a theta approaches pi from the left. So because of this uh, discontinuity, to evaluate this, we need to find the limit of this integral here from pi over 2 to t as t approaches pi from the left. So note now that when we approach pi from the left, this integrand here, is already continuous on the closed interval pi over 2 to t. So we can already use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate this integral here. Now, how do we evaluate this integral? So it seems that we can evaluate this by u substitution. So let us first write the integrand as sine theta raised to negative 1 half times cosine theta and if we let sine theta to be our u, then our du is equal to cosine theta d theta. So what is the integral of u raised to 1 half du? 
it is equal to u raised to one half divided by one half. That is the same thing as times two. And what is our u? Our u is equal to sine theta. So therefore, an antiderivative of our integrand is two times the square root of sine theta. And we have to evaluate this from pi over two to t. And then take the limit as t approaches pi from the left. So evaluating this first at t, we'll get two square root of sine t, and then minus two times square root of sine of pi over two. And we'll get here two times square root of sine of pi, which is equal to zero. Keep in mind that sine of t here is approaching zero from the right. So the limit of square root of sine t is equal to zero. And then minus two square root of sine of pi over two, which is equal to one. And this difference here is equal to negative two. Because this limit here is finite, which is equal to negative two, we say that this improper integral here is convergent. And how do we interpret this value geometrically? If we look at the graph of our integrand, this value here, negative two, tells us that this area under the x-axis bounded by the function, which is our integrand, over the interval pi over two to pi is equal to positive two. And this interpretation is consistent with our geometric interpretation of definite integrals. Let's now move to our second problem. Is the integrand here continuous on the closed interval zero to four? To answer that, let's factor out the denominator and we'll get here x minus a three times x plus one. And clearly, we have a discontinuity on this closed interval, zero to four. And the discontinuity is at x equals three. Therefore, this is a type two improper integral. And because the discontinuity is between the limits of integration, in order to evaluate this improper integral, we have to split it into two integrals. And we're going to use the point of discontinuity to split this integral. And we can write it as integral from zero to three and then plus integral from three to four. Let us evaluate this first integral here. Because we have a discontinuity at x equals three, we're going to compute this integral by writing it as limit. Now, to find an antiderivative of our integrand, we're going to use partial fraction decomposition. And we can easily find the coefficients in our partial fraction decomposition by using cover-up technique. And by applying this technique, we'll get one-fourth and negative one-fourth. How do we get these constants again? So for the numerator of x minus a three, you're going to cover this x minus a three here and replace the x by a three, which is the value of x that will make this factor equal to zero. So replacing the x by three, so the value of our integrand is one over three plus one, which is equal to one fourth. And how do we get this negative one fourth here? So we're going to cover this x plus one here and replace the x by negative one, which is the x value that makes this denominator equal to zero. So we'll get here one over negative one minus a three, so that is negative one fourth. And now we can already find an antiderivative, which is equal to one fourth ln of absolute value of x minus a three, and then minus one fourth ln of absolute value of x plus one. And using property of ln, we can write this difference as one fourth ln of the absolute value of the quotient, x minus a three all over x plus one. And we'll get here evaluating it at t. So we'll get this one here and then minus evaluating at x equals zero, we'll get one fourth ln three. 
Now, as T approaches uh, 3 from the left, this will approach 0. And the denominator will approach 4. And because of this absolute value, we know that this one here will approach 0 from the right. And therefore, the ln of a small positive number, so that will be a large negative number. So this ln here will approach negative infinity. Therefore, this difference here will approach negative infinity. And because this is not finite, then we conclude that this improper integral here is divergent. And because this is already divergent, we can already conclude that this improper integral here is also divergent. Now, how do we interpret this geometrically? So looking at the graph of our function, this negative infinity here tells us that this region here has an infinite area. And because of this, this improper integral is divergent. For this improper integral to be convergent, both of these regions must have finite areas. Let's now move to our third example. Clearly, this is an improper integral because we have a discontinuity at x equals 4. And because 4 is between 1 and 5, we're going to evaluate this integral by first splitting it at x equals 4. So we're going to write this as sum of these uh, two integrals here. And now let's uh, try to evaluate these integrals. So first, this one here, we have a discontinuity at x equals 4. So we compute for the limit of this one from 1 to t as t approaches 4 from the left. And our integral is already in the form integral of u du, where u is equal to x minus 4. So an antiderivative of this is x minus 4 raised to negative 2 thirds plus 1. So that is raised to 1 third divided by 1 third. So that is the same thing as multiplying by 3. And we'll get here limit as t approaches 4 from the left of the value of this when x is equal to t. And then minus the value of this expression when x is equal to 1. And when t approaches 4 from the left, this approaches 0. So the limit of this difference is equal to this constant here, which is equal to negative 3 times negative 3 raised to 1 third, which is equal to 3 times cube root of 3. Now, this is not yet sufficient to conclude that this improper integral here is convergent. So we still have to evaluate this second integral here and applying the same process. We write this integral as limit of this integral from s to 5 as s approaches 4 from the right. And this is equal to the limit of this expression as s approaches 4 from the right. And that is equal to limit. So plugging in 5 for x first, we'll get this one. And then minus plugging in s for x, we'll get this expression here. And as s approaches 4 from the right, this approaches 0. Therefore, this difference approaches this number, which is equal to 3 times 1, which is equal to 3. Therefore, this integral here is equal to 3 cube root of 3 plus 3. And because this is finite, our improper integral is convergent. Now, what does this value represent? If we look at the graph of our integrand, this value here represents the area of this region below the curve over the interval 1 to 5. And because this region has a finite area, this improper integral is convergent. Now, do we really have to evaluate these improper integrals using limits? Can't we just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus even if the integrand is not continuous on the closed interval 1 to 5? 
note that a condition for us to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus is that the integrand must be continuous on the closed interval. So if we don't satisfy that condition, we may get incorrect answer. Let me show you two examples. First, let's consider the previous integral. So if we're going to compute immediately an antiderivative of this, which is equal to this one, and evaluate it from 1 to 5, so we plug in 5 first, so we'll get here a 3 times 1 raised to 1 third, and then minus plugging in 1 for x, we'll get there ne negative 3 raised to 1 third, and this is equal to 3 plus 3 cube root of 3, which is actually the same thing as what we got a while ago. So we're lucky this time that we got the correct answer, but this process is incorrect. And if we're going to do the same process in evaluating other improper integrals, let's say this integral here, so we know here that we have a discontinuity at x equals 2. And even if our integrand has a discontinuity at x equals 2, so we force ourselves to use the fundamental theorem of calculus and find an antiderivative of that and evaluate it from 1 to 4. And we'll get here ln2 minus ln of 1, which is equal to ln2. Do you think this is the right answer? The answer is no. So this is an incorrect process with an incorrect answer. So how do we evaluate this improper integral correctly? So the correct process in evaluating that integral is to split it into two integrals and find the value of each of this integral. And this first integral here can be written as limit of this integral from 1 to t as t approaches 2 from the left and antiderivative of 1 over x minus 2 is equal to ln of absolute value of x minus 2. So this will give us ln of absolute value of t minus 2 and then minus ln of absolute value of 1 minus 2. So this uh, term here is uh, equal to 0. And as t approaches 2 from the left, this absolute value of uh, t minus 2 here will approach 0 from the right. So the ln will approach negative infinity. So this difference here will approach negative infinity. And because this is not finite, we conclude here that this improper integral is divergent. And therefore, this improper integral is also divergent. And because this is a divergent improper integral, then it doesn't have a finite value. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.